Hello everybody, it's Murray here and welcome back to my channel, M. Stuart Paintings. On today's acrylic painting tutorial we're going to paint this gorgeous realistic beach wave. So let's get into it. So for the tutorial you'll need the following colours, they are titanium white, cad yellow, matte orange, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, sap green, iris purple, burnt umber and matte black. Now I've got a burnt sienna painted canvas, I've drawn a horizon with chalk about halfway down the canvas. We're going to have an ocean wave, we're going to have some wet sand, we're going to have a beach, we're going to have some rocks and we're going to create a shadow effect. So I'm going to teach you how to create shade and a shadow just so you can learn that. We're going to have some far away distant mountains and we're going to I'm going to teach you how to do realistic clouds and a lovely gradient in our sky and a gradient in our water. So just like always, if you want to copy down the outline, just pause the video. While you're doing that, I'm just going to get some cobalt blue and I'm just going to block in things like the mountains and the rocks. Just so when we paint over everything, I've got a rough outline of where everything will be. So what we're going to do, we're going to paint a really realistic wave and we're going to have a nice wet sand and beach and I'm going to teach you how to do water, how to paint water and but first we're going to start right at the back and we're going to mix three tones of blue to create our sky. So we're going to have cerulean blue, cobalt blue. So mix cerulean blue and cobalt blue. Cerulean blue is a bit more turquoise and cobalt blue is a bit more cooler. So mix in the two, add plenty of white and you should get that middle tone there. You can add more white to make it more lighter in tone and you can add purple and more cobalt blue to make it cooler in tone. So I've got three tones. So if you want to make it more light, just make cerulean blue, cobalt blue, lots and lots of white. You can add a dot of black. But what you want to do is have more of the whiter tone, like this tone, at the base of your horizon. So cerulean blue, cobalt blue, plenty of white, and a dot of black, and you should get this color here, which is a really nice pastel color. So just remember the rule of thumb, the lightest tone of, or shade of blue is at the horizon. So just think at the base, where it hits the mountains is where you want to have the most white in your blue and as you go upwards in the painting in your sky you just want to add more blue and a little bit of purple to make it cooler so it's an easy trick so to get that shade look what we do is just add a little bit more of the blue and you can add a dot of black and just less white so as you go up you just want to add a little bit more blues it's very very subtle and like always, don't worry if you've got streaks or brush marks. Acrylics are very watery, so don't worry about that. What we'll do is in a minute, we'll just block it in, we'll dry it with a hairdryer, and then we'll just go over the top and I'll show you a easy brush technique to blend it all. So all we're doing, we're just quickly lathering on the paint. So there we go, so about middle of the sky, we're just going to go a bit darker. So look, to make this colour a little bit darker, what we do, look, watch, is you get cerulean blue, cobalt blue, a little bit of purple, and it should make that top colour. And as I say, just add a little bit of white, if it's too dark, just add a little bit of white. If you want it a bit darker, just add more blues. And all you do is you add a little bit more of the cerulean blue, that gives it that sort of turquoisey, sort of more realistic sky colour. So what we're doing, we're just mixing two shades. We've got one slightly lighter and one a bit darker. So the slightly lighter one we're going to put on first. So it's just a little bit more bluer. You can see it's getting a bit cooler. And as I say, it's really subtle just to work on your transitions just to make the sky look more realistic and then as you go up so I don't know why I was doing this with a small brush I'm going to swap to a bigger brush much easier but I think when I did this I put way too much water on my brush so this shows you even me who's doing teaching these tutorials you do have mistakes you do have issues with your equipment 
So look, if I literally just dry the brush, take all the water out of my brush, and then just add more paint, look, look at that. It just flows so much more easier. So all we're doing, we're just putting a cooler blue right at the top of the painting. And what that should do, if you can see, even though it's got lots of brush marks and streaks, it's gradually getting cooler as the sky goes upwards. So I'm gonna give it a dry with my hairdryer, and then all I'll do is I'll zoom in for you now. And now with the big brush, I'm just gonna reapply the same paint so right at the base, we've got lots of white in our mixture and we're just trying to make the base of our horizon really light in color. And then we're just gonna add more of the blue. So the middle shade, look. So we're just getting more blue as we go up, less white. And we're just creating X shapes with our big brush and that should nice and easily blend into the previous color. So just gently push down and create X shapes with your big brush. Everyone asks me what brushes I use. I, I use literally very cheap brushes. I don't really take care of my brushes as you can see. So what I do is just buy a pack of brushes and when they get all worn out, I just throw them away and buy another one. So you don't have to have a special brush. All it is, it's a large brush and it's got a large round head and the bristles are very soft. So if you have not too much water, just enough to make the bristles moist so it's nice and easy to um, flow on the canvas. So look, all we're doing is getting darker as we go up, but you don't have to have a particular brand. I know a lot of people are very particular about their equipment. I'm not, I'm very easy and chilled. So there we go, look at that. So you've got this lovely gradient in our sky as it gets darker as it moves up and all I'm gonna do is just get some cobalt blue and put in our rocks again just because obviously we painted over it just so I know where they are so cobalt blue is great for doing an outline that is not too harsh it's not like black that you can put things where you want and you can paint over it so there we go look at that so don't worry if you've got any streaks or you've gone over bits or your horizon isn't straight we can neaten all that up later that's not a bother but what we're going to do we're just going to mix some color for the mountains so when i get this a bit less zoomed in in a minute for you i'll show you so all we're going to do we're going to take some sap green and if it actually gets out of the way <laughs> so there we go we're gonna get some sap green and some of that darker cooler blue that we just mixed so that was cerulean blue cobalt blue white and purple and we're just going to add some sap green to it and all we're going to do we're just going to block in just roughly some far away mountains So again, don't worry if it's your horizon's not straight, we'll measure that and we'll use some tape later to get a nice straight ocean. It's just in the blocking in stage. Now I think I made it a bit too light, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more green. I'm gonna add some burnt umber to it. Still plenty of that top sky color. I'm just gonna add a little bit of cobalt blue just to cool it down. What we're trying to do, we're trying to use cobalt blues and pastel colors that's why we're using the darkest of the sky color to push these mountains back if we made it very bright in color and very dark in color it would bring them forward so an easy trick if you want to make things look like they're in the background just use the pastel colors and use cobalt blues and that will push your far away things like mountains far off into the distance so just by using pastel tones, you can push things back. So as I say, don't worry about any realism or anything. We just want to block it in right now. There we go. And that looks fab. I'm just going to mix some of that lighter colour, which was cerulean blue, cobalt blue, and tons and tons of white. I'm going to add a tiny bit of that green. And all I'm going to do is just draw some very faint highlights on the mountains. 
And because it's again, it's the sky color, all that does is when you take a step back, it just looks like grooves and divots in the mountains far away. Once it's dried, it just looks more pastel. And because it matches the sky color, it just all blends in. And you can even give it a rub with your finger just to make it look smoother, to make it look less harsh. And then when you zoom out, look, it looks like it's far away. Look at that trick, easy peasy. So again, we've got this lovely gradient in our sky. So now we're gonna do the same with our clouds. So we're gonna mix some white and light blue together. And we're gonna take some purple. Now I use iris purple, like iris is in your eye. And we're just gonna add some burnt umber. It's very cool. If you have a more ready purple, just add some cobalt blue to your purple to mix it. Because some people buy a more of a crimson purple that's available at sh shops. But all we want to do, by adding a little bit of brown to our purple, still got plenty of white and blue. We want to create this sort of light, browny purple, cool tone. And this is going to be the shade parts of our clouds. So all we're doing, I'm using a little brush. I'm just thinking where I want clouds to be. And this sort of grayish purpley color is gonna be the underbelly of these clouds that aren't getting as much sunlight. But they're still very pastel because we wanna push them back into the painting. So what we're doing, we're just creating the shapes of low forming clouds. Can have some big ones and some little ones, we'll have a mixture. So a lot of people have been asking me how to paint clouds as well as also how to paint water, how to paint rocks. So that's why I thought I'd make this tutorial with all these things in it. So hopefully, You'll learn how to paint realistic clouds. You'll learn how to paint realistic water, ocean water and a wave. And also I'll teach you in a minute how to paint rocks and how to paint shade. So with clouds, all I tend to do is put the shadow color on first. So that's why we've got this dark sort of purpley gray. And then what we tend to do is outline the clouds with a highlight. And then we put the very bright highlights which are catching all the sunlight over the top, whoops, got a bit of white here in my paint. Don't worry, we'll paint over that, no one will notice. <laughs> yeah, so all I tend to do is I have very sort of um, horizontal clouds at the horizon. So I try to make them nice and straight and flat. And then as the sky goes up, I tend to make them a bit more diagonal, like the clouds are going up at a slight angle. And that's just to make it look like, because the world is round, just to make them look like they're going around the globe. So all we're gonna do is mix some of that sky color. So it was cerulean blue, cobalt blue, and plenty of white. You can add a tiny bit of that nice purpley gray, just a dot of it, just to make it look very similar. And all I want you to do is just, with your smaller brush, if you just outline your clouds. So whatever you, shapes you've done with the shadows, if you now get this nice subtle highlight and you just outline all your shapes to make them look nice and fluffy, and you can have all little sort of floater wispy clouds coming off it, so you can have all different shapes. So if you just sort of make them look nice and fluffy by just outlining them. And what this color is, is because it's very similar to the base horizon color of the sky, you won't notice it that much. But look, if we go up and just highlight and outline these clouds, you will notice it because obviously the sky is a darker color of blue at the top. So look, if I just outline these ones, look, so you can see the highlight a lot more clearer now. And what this color is, is just a bridge tone between the shadow colors and the really bright highlights that we're going to add in a minute. So all I want you to do is just create shapes and just go around whatever shadow shapes you've made and just outline. A good, good way to make your clouds look wispy 
is just get all the water out of your brush. So have a dry, really soft brush. Just have not too much paint and just push down into the canvas. And what it does is it just makes sort of chalky marks on your canvas that look like wispy bits of a cloud. So look, oh, just outline each one. It's a really easy technique. As I say, this tutorial is perfect for beginners and intermediate artists. There's nothing I'm going to teach you that is too hard. All these techniques you can do at home. So sometimes you have to reapply it twice with acrylics just because being that the highlight is a very light color because it's predominantly white. Unfortunately with acrylics, because they're water based, um, they dry really flat. So sometimes you can add this really nice highlight and then once it's dry, it doesn't look very special. It just looks it dries very bland. So sometimes if you just reapply the same color and just go over it, once it's dry, you can make them much more striking. But as I say, don't worry if they dry too flat. We're going to add much more white in a minute. So all I'm doing, I'm just thinking where to have little tiny clouds. I'm just adding over the top. You can add a tiny bit more white just to get a little bit more highlight. But same technique, we're just leaving gaps in the underpainting and we're just outlining the clouds. So once you are happy with your clouds and you've outlined them all, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put on the super highlights. We're gonna put on the really bright brights. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna dry our brush. So we have a nice dry brush. So look, these are all outlined now. And we're gonna get pure titanium white. And we're not gonna use any water, we're just gonna use the paint. And the reason we're gonna do that is because it's pure and there's not hardly any water, it's nice thick paint. We're going to leave really bright, sharp highlights. So by just using no water, just the titanium white, we're going to add all the highlights over the top. Now these are all the areas of the clouds that are getting plenty of sunlight and they have that gorgeous sort of bright highlight sort of outline. And what that should do is because we've got the lovely shadow color and we've got that lovely bridge tone, because when we now add the highlights to areas of the clouds, it won't be such a harsh jump between the super bright white and the darker purpley gray, because we've got the in-between color. But it's the same technique. All we're doing is outlining areas. We're leaving little gaps and creating little floater clouds. We're just certain edges all I do is just highlight edges just to make them look more prominent so they're not as bland because as I say the acrylics dry really bland they're not like oil paints where they're really striking and bright so a good easy technique is to not use hardly any water whatsoever just lather on the paint and as I say if your highlights do dry a bit flat you can always dry your work with a hairdryer and then go over the highlight with the exact same color. So if your white um, dried a bit flat and they're not as bright as you want, just use your hairdryer and just reapply the white paint over the top and that will make you the white look whiter, and look even brighter. So if I zoom in for you, it's just really easy technique. Just load up your brush just put nice thick splats of paint and all this as I keep saying to you from a zoomed in position doesn't look anything special looks quite basic but if you take a step or two back it's the colors and all these tones that are tricking the eye and they'll make your work look really realistic So same technique over and over again. Just think of where you want little blobs to be. Outline some of your clouds. So 
Super easy. If you find, instead of using a brush for this, you could use a palette knife. Because the palette knife, you can pick up nice thick amounts of paint and you can do it like that. So they are looking nice. Because we don't want to make the clouds too striking because we want to have them push back into the background. Because in a minute when we start doing our rocks and our beach, we want to bring that forward. So by having the clouds not too striking, just sort of nice and blended in with the sky, they'll stand out, but they'll also look very realistic. So that's looking cool. So just going over some of the highlights, as I say, just to make them look even brighter. Now they're dry. Just going over the top with the same technique, same paint, just to make those whites look brighter. Same at the bottom. Just have some of those low clouds, just picking up a bit of the sun. And the great thing about acrylics, if you do make a mistake, you can always paint over it, just dry it with a hairdryer. You can add a bit more sky colour if you think you've covered up too much or you've overworked things. I do that all the time. But there we go, that is looking fab. We've got this nice gradient in the sky, we've got this lovely clouds, they're nice pushed back. So now we're going to work on our rocks and we're going to use darker tones to bring our rocks forward. So I'll zoom in for you. So we're going to create this nice shadow tone and we're going to create realistic rocks. So we're going to get some sap green and we're going to get some cobalt blue. So plenty of cobalt blue and sap green. Gonna get a little bit of burnt umber just to make it look more earthy and natural. Burnt umber adding to a color makes things look more um, earthy and natural. So it makes things look more realistic. So all we're gonna do, we're just gonna create a dark greeny browny blue sort of outline. And this is all sort of the grass on top of this ridge that is getting a bit of sunlight. But adding cobalt blue to it still pushes it back. So all we're going to do is just create an edge. And that's all the sort of grass right on the bank. We've got this burnt sienna colour I kind of like. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to mix some burnt umber and cobalt blue. So I've got this nice grey browny blue. And we're just going to start blocking in the rocks. So all I tend to do is I try to gauge the colour. Now I think at first I was going to use the burnt sienna to create a nice rock formation, have the burnt sienna shining through. But I think the burnt sienna is just too orange and too bright. So all I'm doing, I'm just creating sort of the texture of rocks and boulders. So by using this brown and cobalt blue, I'm just trying to create sort of, just like we did with the shadow color on the clouds, I'm just trying to create sort of texture where you'll have things like different rocks and things coming together. So I'm gonna add some white to the mix and some orange. So I'm gonna make a nice gray browny orange and I'm gonna add a tiny bit of Carulean blue just to make it more greenish, more of a stone color. Look, that looks much more like stone. Because I think the burnt sienna is just a too harsh, but by having a little bit of orange in the mix still, and the cerulean blue, we're gonna make this warm orangey gray, and we're gonna start building up our rocks. So again, just like the clouds, it's not hard, we're just doing different stages. So think of the foundation, we're just putting different stages on top of each other. So 
there we go. And I'm going to add some burnt umber to the mix and some sap green and some cobalt blue. And I'm going to make a much darker earthy tone. So I'm just going to add some white to it and some orange again. A little bit more blue. So this is a slightly darker version of the same color. And I'm just going to fill in where we had some burnt sienna. And I'm just going to make this ridge blended. So all I'm doing, I'm leaving slight gaps with the burnt sienna just to shine through. These could be little highlights. I'm just blocking it in. Now I've got to gauge the colour that I want. That looks kind of realistic in colour. Let's block this in. There we go. Now we're going to get some purple. And some cobalt blue. And we're going to create a darker shadow tone. So... That can be the sort of shadow from the rocks that is on the beach. So the reason we're using purple and cobalt blue is they're perfect for creating cooler in colour and tone. So it's perfect for creating shadows. So these are all the area. If you think that big rock is sort of blocking out most of the sunlight, but not too much. So it casts this nice subtle shadow. It's just an added bit of detail. So all I'm doing, I'm just trying to roughly mirror the shape of the rocks onto our beach. So again, just block it in. Don't worry if it's scruffy. And while I've got that tone, if you think this area, because it's got its back to where all the light's coming through, it's going to create shadows. So especially in this sort of left hand side, this area is going to be much more in the shade. So we're going to create some cooler shadows and just give our rocks a more 3D, a more realistic tone. So we're going to get some more cobalt blue, some more burnt umber. A little bit of sap green. And we've got a really dark sort of shadow tone now. And we're just going to put in some rocks. So I'm just going to put in all just little divots and rocks and boulders. So this could be all the sort of nice sort of cliff tops that you get at the uh, at the beach, just add in some texture. Now, all I tend to do is just draw lines coming down, and some going across, and I just try to give the impression of detail and texture. But really, it's the colours. So, because we've got these realistic colours, that are the thing that makes it look real. So I keep saying to you in all these tutorials, work on your colours, work on your tones. Try to mix realistic colours. And as you get better at drawing, as you get better and you're able to compose things that look more realistic, and you mix the two together, so you mix realistic colours with good drawing, your work will look photorealistic and look really, really real. So obviously we're just doing these hour tutorials, but imagine you were doing this for an hour, a couple of hours, you can make something look absolutely super realistic. So I'm just going to get some purple, and all I'm going to do is mix some cobalt blue and purple together. So lots of cobalt blue and purple. And I'm just going to make this area a lot more darker. And this is all the area that's in the shade. Now we're starting to build up this texture. 
just going to add some shadow to this one corner. So this is all the area of the rocks and the cliffs that aren't getting much sunlight. So they're cooler in temperature and colour. So that's starting to look cool. And what I'm going to do is just cool this area and match the light. I'm just going to use that same tone and just blend it on the left hand side. It's all matches. Now we've got our shadow tone. I'm going to add some white to the mix and some orange just to make a more pastel bright tone. And I'm going to put some highlights on the right hand side. So where we had the shadows on the left hand side, all we're going to do is do the same technique with hotter, brighter tones. And these are all the areas, just like the clouds, that are getting a bit of sunlight. Because we've got this nice contrast between the cool purpley blues on one side and the bright highlights on the other, they complement each other. And they make it look realistic. So once I move my fingers, we should have some cool looking rocks. Look at that. So we've got this nice contrast between the highlights and the shadows just from colours. So really, really easy. And we're going to get some of that brown and cobalt blue that we mixed up earlier. And all we're going to do is just have some boulders and rocks. These could be all the sort of nice rocks you get that come away from the cliffs onto the beach. You get bits of seaweed, don't you? You get sort of sort of wild seaweed that washes up onto the shore and sticks and things. So we can add some texture just to make it look less bland and more cool. So again, it's no detail, it's the colours. Just add some bits and bobs. You can even add some footprints if you chose to. You can do anything you want. So that is looking fab. That's looking really nice and realistic. We've got our lovely pushback sky and we've got this nice and dark rocks that are brought into the foreground. So now we're going to work on our ocean. So we're going to do just like the sky where we've got that nice transition. We're going to do the exact same thing in the ocean. So we're going to create a nice wave. We're going to measure a straight horizon. So if you just get a tape measure, measure a straight horizon. Make sure that your painting is dry before you apply some painting tape because you don't want to rip off your rocks and your sky so make sure that it's nice and dry you will see me do that later <laughs> you will see me make a boo-boo later and we're going to take some of that darker sky color which was cerulean blue cobalt blue lots of white and some purple so cerulean blue cobalt blue purple and white can add a little bit of black to it just a dot just to or brown just to make it look more earthy and all we're going to do is we're going to add some sap green to the mix and some brown to make it nice and earthy and we're going to try to create realistic ocean water so add in some brown and some sap green what it does is it it just makes it nice and earthy and if you want to darken it you just add some cobalt blue and that sort of implies deep water so we've got this lovely realistic tone we've got a nice straight tape I know my easel is a bit wonky but I assure you my horizon is nice and straight <laughs> and all we're gonna do is just like the sky we're just gonna block this in first so again don't worry if you have streaks or you have brush marks we will go over the top once it's dry we just want to get the colors bang on because if you nail the colors everything will look much more realistic so I'm going to use this color for the wet shiny sand so if you imagine when the water the ocean wave comes up onto the beach it leaves a sort of carpet sort of, of shimmering wet sand so all I'm going to do is use this colour to make that nice wet sand coming up to the beach here. And if you can see, I've left my cobalt blue outline because I'm going to go over that to create sea foam in a minute. 
So if you do do what I just did and paint over it by mistake, don't worry, you can always roughly see it. That's the good thing about cobalt blue, it shines through. So all you want to do is just go about halfway down in your ocean with that color. And then we're going to make a bit of a darker shade. So the same trick, we're going to keep two shades. We're going to have cobalt blue, cerulean blue, white and purple. We're going to add lots of burnt umber now. So we're going to make a much more browny version. A little bit of sap green just to make it still look like the ocean. So we've got two shades now. So we've got a lot more brown of shade. And all we're going to do is block in this bottom corner. So again, don't worry if you have any burnt sienna shining through, we'll go over this with the big brush in a minute and same technique. We just want to block it in. And all that is, is if you think when the ocean and the sand sort of combine, it's a mixture between the two colours. So if you have sort of a greeny, bluey water and you have a browny beach, all this colour is, is just a mixture of the two. So all we're doing, we're just going to block in this area. I'm going to leave where I want my beach in the burnt sienna. I'm going to put that in last because I haven't debated what color I want that. So there we go. Easy peasy. So we've got this nice gradient again. I'm just going to dry it and I'm just going to go over with the exact same shades with the big brush. So I'm just going to take out all the streaks, all the horrible watery marks. I'm just going to go over the top with my big brush. So as I keep saying to you, acrylics are absolutely perfect for people who are just learning. If you are a beginner artist or you're an intermediate artist, as they're very cheap, they're very inexpensive and they're very easy to use. They dry very quick and you can go over the top so you can work very fast. So they're very, very forgiving. So look, all I'm doing, I'm just doing the X shapes, look, the X shapes back and forth, back and forth. I'm just try and take all the streaks out. Now here's the subscribe button and the bell notification. If you haven't liked and subscribe please do so as it really helps other artists see the videos and learn if you want to know when the latest tutorial comes available if you just press the bell notification you will be alerted by youtube um, and notified when there's new tutorials we have i think about 40 50 tutorials of landscape paintings now so if you've subscribed and you have the notification i'm trying to do at least one a week now now i'm feeling a lot better my shoulder and my neck's all healed i'm trying to re do a tutorial for everyone once a week and if anyone has any ideas of things they want to learn please put them in the comments below so I've got this nice matching dark tone on the left hand side to match the shadow again of the rocks so everything matches but also I'm going to sign it in the left hand side so I've left the um, the more brown color the darker tone on the left and all I'm doing look I'm just mixing the two tones together just with my big brush, just like the sky. So we've got this nice transition and that's gonna be our underpainting. And we're gonna start putting the waves on top. So I'm just gonna take some um, cad yellow and I'm just gonna mix it into that brownie color that we made. So that was cobalt blue, white and burnt umber. And I'm just gonna add some yellow you can add a tiny bit of white to make it more of a creamy color i'm just going to block in the beach so again don't worry if it's too scruffy we just want to block in this area and i think because it's quite a pastel tone i'll probably have to do two coats like normal so we just want the beach sticking out 
going to have this shadow here. And because this color is a lot lighter and brighter, and the shadow color is nice and bluey purple, what it should do once it's dry, so let's just reapply it, it should give a nice contrast between the shadow and the bits that are in the sunlight. So again, just reapply the paint. If you get any streaks or any horrible brush marks, just dry it and go over it. Just gently push down and blend it into the previous tones. Just so you don't have any sharp edges. So it looks good for now. Okay, so we're gonna build up our wave. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get some sap green and we're gonna get some cobalt blue. So sap green and cobalt blue, we're going to add a little bit of burnt umber just to make it nice and earthy and a tiny bit of that cerulean blue, purple, cobalt blue and white. So that darker sky color that we had at the top of our painting. We're going to swap to a flat brush and what we're going to do, we're going to load up our flat brush and the reason I use a flat brush is we're going to put lines to insinuate waves. So we're going to go right up to the tape and we're just going to go across with our flat brush. And this is going to give the impression of waves. So these, if I zoom in for you, these are all the caps of the waves. So by leaving gaps in the underpainting, we're just creating shapes and the brush is doing all the work for me. And it even creates these sort of nice sort of funny oblique shapes that we have these nice sort of rounded bits that look like the caps of waves. Sort of like a little diamond shape where the brush sort of splits. So just come down, just leave gaps, try to do them randomly. So don't have them all looking the same. So if you have some at the edge, don't have other ones at the edge, have them all different sort of lengths and shapes. And they should look like waves. So again, just like the clouds and the rocks, painting water is not difficult if you know each stage. So if you do the underpainting first, and then you put the shadows on the top, and then you put the highlights. So we're going to add some brown to the mix, so we're going to add some burnt umber to the mix and just to match our tones as we come down by adding more browns and making it look more earthy, we're just going to make our waves look more earthy in colour. So everything matches, all the transitions match. So same technique all the way down please. So look at that, we've got this fantastic lovely detail now. Now this was the problem, I didn't dry my work here and I pulled my tape off. So I've got a bit of a boo-boo because I was rushing, I was too busy filming. So I painted over it, no one would notice. <laughs> but what it did make me notice is I don't really like the mountains because they're too similar in colour to our oceans. So we're going to fix them later. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to swap to a fine liner a very thin brush and I'm going to get pure titanium white so just like we did with the clouds and where we had that cobalt blue outline if I zoom in for you we're going to do an outline of our ocean wave so where you had the cobalt blue outline what we did at the beginning of the tutorial just go over the top quite thick amount of paint so just like the clouds, I want you to use no water, just loads of white paint and create a nice thick outline. So if you imagine when the wave comes up onto the beach, it has that lovely sort of outer frothy sea foam and we want to replicate that. So nice thick outline please. So look at that, it's already starting to take shape. And can you see how it's the colours 
and how now we've put the little sort of caps of head we've got the matching waves now when we're adding the sea foam on top and this nice sort of froth of our wave it's making it look really realistic it's a nice thick outline take your time so now you've got this realistic outline we're just going to create sea foam so these are all the bubbles and all the froth as the wave hits the bank of the beach so all I'm going to do is come off certain parts of the wave so sort of where it joins and I'm just going to take my time I'm just using pure titanium white no other color I'm just trying to create bubbles and froth coming out from it so if I zoom in for you we'll start at the top what I'm going to do is certain waves as the wave comes up I'm just going to create sort of little caps of wash sort of foam just sort of to match the shape and the same on the edges just so it looks like the waves are crashing into the beach So again, look, when you see the painting close up, it doesn't look particularly special, does it? But when you take a step or two back, it looks real. This is all tricks of the eye. So just coming out from that outline just take your time as I say you can use a reference photo I'm just I I tend to as I say use reference photo but with this one I was kind of working out my own imagination What I'm doing, I'm just thinking where the water would be, certain waves, and just trying to emphasize the foam and the caps. I don't want to overdo it, I don't want to put white everywhere. Certain areas, I'm just coming back. Now, as we move down and we're getting closer to the viewer, I'm just making them slightly bigger and more zigzaggy. So, look, more like interconnecting and zigzaggy. Because if you think, if you were standing at the bottom of this painting, looking out into the distance, things that are closer to you will appear bigger. So it's all about perception. So all I'm going to do is some of the white splodges, where they're very much like dots and very little at the top, and the waves are very little, because they're obviously far off in the distance, to make this sea foam look like it's closer to the viewer I'm just making some of these splodges look a little bit bigger and a bit more interconnected a bit more zigzaggy I'm just making zigzag shapes with it just to make it look more realistic I hope I'm explaining this very well <laughs> it's very hard to explain something in nature with language so look this is what I mean I'm trying to make the things in the foreground seem bigger so the splats that we're creating I'm making them look larger just so it looks like it's closer to the viewer makes them bring them towards them so by making some of these splodges quite big and large and all connected up it makes the sea foam look nearer I 
I find when you're an artist, you don't need to describe stuff because you can just do things that it's much easier to show people visually than describe. So I hope I'm <laughs> describing it well. So it's starting to look super realistic. All from the colors and the techniques. So there we go. Just joining it up to the ridge of that foam. So look, I've got loads of paint on the edge of my brush. I'm just splatting it out. The brush is actually very small, but there's just so much paint on the end of it. And there's no water, just really thick white paint. So just like we did with the clouds. Just making zigzags, look. Some that connect, some that don't. And we'll just make this ridge nice and thick, just to frame the painting. We'll just do this bottom corner. So plenty of splats here. dots this area just up here is just a bit bald isn't it it's just a bit blank but look at that look how realistic that's starting to look and again it's the colors it's the tones so anyone can do this at home so what's so fantastic about the world we live in YouTube, you can watch and learn anything at the touch of a button. So we're going to get some of that dark creamy blue, which is Carulean blue, cobalt blue, and white and purple. We're going to add some little bit of cobalt blue and a little bit of um, sap green. And I'm just going to create the wet sand. So I'm just going to go over the top. And this is all the sort of shimmering water that when the wave peels back, it leaves that sort of nice shimmering carpet on the sand. And I want to emphasize the light on it. So I'm just using a lighter tone just to create the shimmer effect. I'm using a flat headed brush. So just like we did with the caps of the waves and it's much easier to go crosswise. So look, I'm going across with the brush and that creates that sort of shimmer. So I'm just leaving some bits where it comes up onto the beach just to make it look realistic. And then as it comes down, I want to leave the left hand side still more brown and dark because I want to put my signature in the bottom left hand corner. <laughs> so I want to leave it less bluey bluey green so what i'm doing look i'm trying to make it look like the water's peeling back and you're getting all that sort of dross coming up onto the wet sand so i'm deliberately leaving the left hand corner because i want all my credit <laughs> and i want to put my signature in the bottom corner and i'm just gonna get some of that dark creamy blue that we made that is the top of the painting and again i'm just with the flat brush i'm just putting some highlights and some shimmer just at the very top just so it looks like the sky is shimmering down and I'm just going to come down with my flat brush and I'm just going back and forth back and forth bringing it down and I'm just trying to create the shimmer as the water sort of comes back and you get that nice sort of shiny ridge as the water meets the sand So 
just creating that sort of zigzags. So back and forth, back and forth. And again, it's just all that sort of shiny water sort of peeling back. So look at that, that's looking cool. That's looking epic. And then I didn't like the mountains, so I think I'm going to revisit them. I think I'm going to add some blue, some cobalt blue and burnt umber. And a little bit of sap green. I think they're too bland. So even though in real life they probably would be that colour, we're going to make them more cobalt bluey, so we're going to make them more darker, a little bit of the sky colour obviously just to make them not too dark. But I think I want them more blue than anything. So cobalt blue is fantastic for pushing things back. So there we go. So let's see what this looks like. This looks better. Because I think because our watercolour is so realistic, I think if we don't use a different colour for the mountains, they won't stand out. They'll just blur into the ocean and it will look like our ocean is coming up into the clouds in a funny shape. So by just changing the colour, we can emphasise the mountains. I'm also what I'm thinking as well, now I'm seeing this. See I told you, bit of a perfectionist, bit of a if I don't like something I'll keep going to ch to I figure it out. I think the mountains just look a bit weird. I think they're just too straight. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the bottom sky colour, which was Cerulean blue, cobalt blue, and plenty of white. And I'm going to turn them into faraway cliffs that are sort of bending round into the sea. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take them away. So as I said, this is the wondrous thing about acrylics. If you don't like something, you can just dry it and paint over it. And if I zoom in for you in a minute, if you make a mistake, just dry it and paint over it. You don't have to worry. It's not like oil paints where you have to wait a few days for them to dry. Otherwise you make a mucky mess. So look, there we go. Look, and if you've got bits of the underpainting shining through, because obviously it was a dark colour, just dry it with a hair dryer. Just reapply your sky colour. And just like the streaks in your painting, it will just take it away. So don't worry if you make a boo-boo like me. I make plenty of them. <laughs> So sorry at home if you're following along and you had nice mountains, it's up to you, you can leave them if you've done them a bit more blue and they stand out and you like them. It's totally your preference, but I didn't like mine, so. And then, just to top it off, I forgot to dry my work and I made a rookie mistake and look, dun 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 So this is why I was saying, and even the paint, the sellotape split, which it never does, but obviously I'm filming so all these things will happen on camera, <laughs> of course. So again, look, we just paint over it, no one would notice. Just dry it and paint over it. But that's why I insist that you dry your work at stage in each stage before applying things like tape. Even though I don't adhere to my own advice, that's what you're gonna do. But I hope you can see, look, the reason I'm leaving all these mistakes in the tutorials is everyone's human, everyone makes mistakes, everyone does these things. Don't beat yourself up if you do them at home. So just cover any gaps that you've made if you've ripped your painting with tape. And if you have, just add the white. I bet you haven't at home, I bet you've all done it perfectly. <laughs> so look, no one would ever notice. Just put back, if you make a mistake, just paint it back in. And away we go. So look, no one would notice, she's looking fab. Just gonna mix some brown into the mix of the sky color 
a little bit of cobalt blue. So brown and blue. And just here on the left, I'm going to add some seaweed and some bits and bobs. As I say, you could, if you wanted to, add some footprints, or you could have a person or a dog, whatever you want to. I love when people send me versions of their tutorials and they've thought outside the box and they've shown initiative and they've added things to them, like a boat or a person, as I say, um, someone swimming, the surfer. I love that. I love when people, as I say, make my tutorials their own and go that extra mile. So again, if you're if you're posting your tutorials, please tag me at M Stuart Paintings at M Stuart Paintings on Instagram. I love to shout people's work out. But all I'm doing, look, I'm just adding some texture. I'm just adding some seaweed and bits, just with a fine liner and some of that cobalt blue and burnt umber. So again, it's just adding a little detail. Obviously, I'm making this up out of my head. So I'm just thinking what I want, but if you're if you're following along at home, you can add bits, and bobs, whatever you choose to. It's your work. So there we go. It's a bits of stones and bobbles. Just adds a bit to the realism. And I'm just going to get some of the bottom horizon color, which was cerulean blue, cobalt blue, and white. And I'm just going to put a tiny bit on my flat brush and I'm just going to create a bit more of a shimmer just here onto the beach just to emphasize that sort of shimmer in, in the wet sand. So all I'm doing, I'm just creating lines with my flat brush. I've got barely any paint. I'm just going back and forth like zigzags. Look. And where I now know where I want my signature to be, I've just put my signature in quickly, just so I can frame it. And I'm just gonna create some highlights just so it looks like the water peeling back. So again, all these final finishing touches just bring the piece alive. So I'm just wiping off most of the paint. I've got hardly any paint on my brush. I'm just creating straight lines with the flat brush. So just like when we did the ocean waves, the flat brush does all the work. And again, <laughs> being the perfectionist that I am, I hate my mind. <laughs> so I'm just going back and just changing them again. So I'm sorry if you're following along at home, but these things really bug me. So I'm just joining it up just so it looks like it's fading off into the distance. So I think that looks much better. Just by using the darker blue, it just makes it have a little bit more difference in color to our ocean. It just sticks out a bit more. So as I say, it just makes it as a painting look a bit nicer. And just to finish her off, I'm gonna take some of the sand color. So do you remember that was a cad yellow, tiny bit of white, and some burnt umber and a tiny bit of purple just to make it look a bit like yellow okra and I'm just going to bring the beach where we've just changed our mountains I'm just going to bring the beach in tiny shade just to make it nice and straight just put a little bit of shimmer onto the sand as well so just the same technique as what we did with the water I'm just creating sort of zigzags and that's just sort of the sunlight coming down onto the beach Add a little bit of texture, obviously, to the sand. So there we go. Super easy. Now I think she's finished. So I've signed her in the bottom corner. So you've learned how to do a realistic gradient in your sky and your ocean. You've learned how to do realistic clouds, <laughs> realistic mountains in the end. You've learned how to do a fantastic realistic wave, ocean wave, and these realistic cliff top rocks with a shadow. You've learned how to do a um, lovely detail and you have all painted this fantastic lovely acrylic painting so thank you so much everyone for painting along with me real time step by step at home i've really enjoyed painting along with you please subscribe and like the channel if you haven't already please put any comments in the videos below my name is murray i hope you all have a fantastic day wherever you're watching see you soon bye